I love this idea. I love this concept. Uh, I'm glad you're giving uh, local people a chance to tell their story. And, uh, you, you know, I I listened to the Alan Jones one. He just uploaded that onto Spotify, I saw. So I looked it up, and I'm like, oh, I better make sure there's no got you questions before I came here. <laughs> and I was listening to the one on Alan, and I learned a whole lot about something, somebody that I know that I didn't know, and now I know it. You know what I mean? It was great. And, I, you know, I learned uh, he kind of motivated me a little bit to get hustling. Oh, yeah? Because, you know, I, I caught the part of your uh, conversation where, you, you know, he, you can kind of be complacent. You know, you get enough money, and, you know, you guys were talking <laughs> about that. But You ready to get started? Yes. All right. So let's, um, I'm going to figure out which fancy button this is. And there it is. That's the fancy button. All right. Kevin Haddis. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. Yeah. What do wish, you uh, is this thing on? This yeah. Thing, check, yeah. Check, check. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Do a little tap, a little love tap on there. Yeah. So um, give me the elevator. Uh, the elevator. Give me the elevator. See, this is what I'm talking about. I got to cut. I got to edit all this shit out because I can't let people know I'm stupid. Give me the elevator pitch, sir. What do you do? Who do you do it to? And also, what's your name? Well, I wear a lot of hats. Yeah. I really do. So let me let me just kind of give you a broad overview. So welcome to Selma. You're in a city where I'm a city council member serving, I think, my eighth or ninth year. Uh, I'm a small business owner of uh, Cartwheel Communications. We do web development tied into billing systems, uh, e-commerce specifically. Um, I, uh, I'm a soccer coach, uh, select uh, soccer coach. I'm actually managing a team right now, but I have a license to coach, so I've kind of my son's gotten older, so I've kind of stepped back in that role. Very nice. uh, and my son's in uh, eighth grade, and uh, my daughter's in fifth grade. So, how long have you? Uh, is Cartwheel your your main uh, uh, entrepreneurial endeavor? I guess you'd say your own. Your, your, that's your business. Yeah, correct. Is that your main business? Yeah. So I started it right around uh, the time of the recession, two thousand eight. You know, not necessarily really? the best time to start a business start but uh yeah we went after uh you know we went after like nonprofits and stuff and uh okay. chambers of commerce and people like tangy Patton. you mm -hmm. know she's got the the food show on saturday on tv and uh we built those systems we got in i helped uh form the san antonio pipeliners association because they needed a web guy <laughs> to build the website right on and so we we built all, all those systems and that kind of got us through the recession until nice. people like um until now, which is an entrepreneurial boom going yes, on in our country yes. right now. It's re it's refreshing. And that's kind of what this show is kind of geared about. You know what I mean? Like I want somebody watch a show, a podcast, or listen to a podcast and be like, you know what? I got that little bit of information from Kevin Haddis. You know, I think I'm going to go for it. You know, or Alan Jones or whoever. You know what I mean? Once you get to that comfortable level, it's easy to kind of coast along and that's kind of nice for a while. And a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. um, but once you're there, the work isn't necessarily as difficult or as challenging. You can spend eight hours a week sometimes or 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, and that's so for point. me, uh, you know, I hear a lot of people, you know, how long, how long did it take you to get to that level? Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, I'm still almost there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to chase anybody off. No, it probably took us two or three years of solid working. Um, and I got to a point where I've been pretty complacent, got the kids up to the age that they're at now. And now I'm really trying to press for that next level. Whenever you first started, um, whenever you, whenever you first went out on your own, uh, back in 08, um, what was the expectation? What did, I mean, did, did you, when you went out on your, first of all, I assume you had some type of employment coming into that. I don't think you're generationally wealthy, right? No. So I was working for a company called My Arc World, and they kind of did something similar. And, uh, but the, the model didn't really work because, you know, I don't want to get into all that, you know, calling people out on your podcast sure, sure, here, sure. but there, there was definitely some personality Stosh issues. didn't have a problem yeah, doing that. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but I started, you know, I kind of knew what the model was and I kind of knew if we could tie merchant services in with, with web, web development and some of that kind of stuff that we could, that I could make money relatively easily, relatively quick. Mm -hmm. What I didn't realize is all the wonderful things about being an entrepreneur, like the tax benefits, the writing off the mileage, the, Oh, Jason, if we were having lunch today, I'm talking about my company, we could do this as a business lunch mm -hmm. and I could buy you lunch and so on and so forth, which saves me on the, the you know, the beautiful tax benefits. Uh, I don't think I would have done it unless I had a stable income. Okay. 
you got to have some sort of support system, even if it's just you. If, you, if you're working a nine to five and you're starting this entrepreneur life on a, as a side hustle, or if you have a spouse that can uh, float things until you get things up and running, whatever the case right, may okay. be. So, yeah, I, th- I, th- so for me, I think the expectation getting back to your question is that I, I was expecting to make a couple thousand bucks a month. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize, you know, uh, you know, I could have big months, real big months, you know, and, that certainly happens in this in being an entrepreneur, and it happens. You have slow months too, in times when you're a little scared. Feast or famine. <laughs> I've learned how to budget. I've learned how to budget. I've learned how to live within my means. Uh, here, you know, Dave Ramsey. You know, it's a no-brainer. Uh, you do have to take care of your money, and if you can take care of your money, you can start a business. Mm-hmm. So I'll tell you a funny story. Whenever I went out on my own, but it was January of 2007. And so um, it, it was a tough decision for me because I really enjoyed where I worked, you know. But um, what's interesting, though, is uh, 10, 2010 was my hardest year. I think I did like five jobs. And, I mean, uh, I was on the last notch on my belt. I couldn't tighten it anymore, you know what I mean? And so uh, I was, you know, down in the dumps and pity party or whatever and just like, feel, you know, of course I had a few other things going on too, you know. But um, I can remember, I can remember uh, telling my my wife at the time, I was like, you know, I really screwed up. You know, I I really shouldn't have left that that business that I was at, you know, where I worked, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I looked them up and they had closed, they went out of business. And then, so I was like, you know, way different perspective. You know, I was like, had I not went out on my own, I would be in much worse shape right now because I, I at least had a few years to build up some customers, some clients, some some reputation. You know what I mean? If 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 I would have waited until the axe, ooh, I would have been in much worse shape. I was telling Amy, my wife, last night. I said, "Hey, I'm going to be on this podcast," and she's like, "I don't screw it up." And then I said, <laughs> "I said, no, no, no. She's I need got to high go. expectations of I my said, ability." <laughs> yeah, I said, I said, no, I'm not going. I won't embarrass you, but I said, you know, with Jason, the thing about it is, is if I ever run out of business ideas. And I got it like 9,000. I'm calling you because every time I turn around, it's like, you have another idea, you know, you know, and and here we are, you know, you got this big studio and you're doing this and I'm thinking it's great. And I have five ideas I'm going to give you after this about (laughs) this podcast or how you can grow it. But yeah, uh, you know, it's just an awesome time to be an entrepreneur and it's an awesome time where, you know, with, you know, some equipment, you can Mm -hmm. make a podcast and do things like this. Hey, so I have a question for you. Uh-oh. Why I have you here? Okay. So do you ever get sick of doing something? I don't know. Sometimes it's like, I want to try something completely different. You know, like if you ever thought about like, I'm going to go down and sell cars or, you know, I want to, you know, uh, for me, I started a podcast. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, did you do that, you know, just out of necessity or just because you wanted to do something different or. Yeah, I do different shit all the time. Um, I think, I think, um, well, I have to, you know, I, at the same time, I've also been a draftsman for 20 years. So, I mean, that's my support system. You know what I mean? I like, I have that income. So whenever I go off the rails with a podcast or a Harley or whatever yeah. the hell my, you know, the, after the bills come in and then it's like, okay, I, I got to work the next, you know, six days straight, <laughs> you know, it reels me back in. Right now, I'm actually uh, I'm helping out a friend of mine, uh, Eric Anderson. Okay. Eric Anderson and Associates. I met him through the Tri County Chamber, mm-hmm. um, and Eric's got a, a training consulting type uh, business, and he's trying to get in in front of some uh, some businesses and school districts with leadership training, mm-hmm. uh, those type of things, and so. You know, Eric's a wild guy. I met him and he's like, yeah, you know, I was the equipment manager at Oklahoma State when Barry Sanders was there and I got a degree from Harvard and I was, and he's like, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, he's telling me a story and I, you know, I I ref some NFL games and, (laughs) and, and I I was like, what is this? Forrest Gump? Wow. Yeah. That's uh, quite the resume. (laughs) Going through his resume and I was like, all right, I got to check this guy out. (laughs) What a, what a classic, fascinating character. But he's asked me to help him get in some doors with some sales and, setting up a cruise, for example, with real estate agents to get mm-hmm. their continuing education credits and some of that. So I'm kind of dabbling in that right now. It's sales, but, uh, you know, it's a good way to support my income, why our inventory is full, mm-hmm. and while I look for a web developer. And so, uh, yeah, that's why I was curious about whether or not, you know, you. I know you like to, ch- you would change direction every three days if you could, but, you <laughs> yeah, know, if- it's kind of like, I got a million ideas, man, and I want to try some, you know? Yeah. Oh no, absolutely. I think that that's, um, 
I think the I think the real sad thing is is that the, the that the that the people out there that hopefully are listening to this that have a million ideas that you know they just they get up in the morning and they go do their nine to five and they say oh that would never work for me you know that's that's depressing you know what I mean I you, you got to act on some of that stuff you got to you know you, you got to be vulnerable you got to throw some of that stuff out there and see what happens you know what I mean. Well, my, you know, my wife's in education and, you know, there's times throughout the day, you know, I'll send her a text. It'll take three hours to get back. It might be, you know, do you want to, you know, and so I ask people that are entrepreneurs, you know, could you go and be a teacher? Mm -hmm. Could you actually go? And I get it. They get a lot of time off and that's all fine and dandy, but could you sit there and every day be there and continue to grow those kids and, you know, be on that strict of a routine. Sometimes I like to stay up till 1130 mm -hmm. on a weeknight. Yeah. You know, <laughs> wait, I always stay up till 11. I'm not that old. I'm not that old, but you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. some, some, sometimes, and if you're in education, you can't cause you mm -hmm. have to be on your a game cause those parents and kids and you know, the rest of the school's counting on you. Yeah. And, or, or whatever it is, or selling cars. Those mm -hmm. guys work like 60 hours plus a week every single week. They got to get their 10 units in. Mm -hmm. uh, in sales, I, I don't know if I could go back to work and do that kind of stuff. I really don't. Could you? Uh, I will say I don't think that I could go back doing my current job as a 9 to 5. And the main reason is because of how my silly brain works. It doesn't work like the normal person i guess because like <clears throat> i go to i you know like i struggled with this with every nine to five job that i had except for construction because you're usually pretty busy but um like whenever i would whenever i started working in an office you know i would go in you know get my coffee go sit at my desk and start the day and then it's just you know my mind wanders i see squirrel running outside my uh, like to this day my office in the back here i can't have any windows i i, <laughs> I can't i got to be in, in a dungeon where there's as little distraction as possible but you know no i couldn't go back to a 9 to 5 because the expectation of what the employer wants from you in the 9 to 5 you know what i mean yeah. like i can't i i can't get back to doing that you know what i mean i can get i can knock out a whole bunch of production um in you know, let's say between midnight and three o'clock in the morning, you know, I could do a week's worth of work because there's nothing going on at that time. And I'm kind of a night owl, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, and this was even kind of a problem with my last job because <clears throat> I was working, I, I was, I was paid, I was paid a salary of 40 hours a week and I was working well upwards of 80 hours a week. I need a week off. They're like, you don't have vacation. Just did all these eighty-hour weeks? Are you crazy? I, what do you mean? I don't have vacation, so no, I don't think that I could. I don't think I could go back to nine to five. Well, you know, I think on that, and especially with entrepreneurs and stuff, I think the millennials are changing things for us. I mean, we give them a hard time, they but give I us do, a hard time too. Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have that. We have that thing. But Mutual. This, this um, new generation is kind of creating more of that work environment. I think uh, COVID kind of pushed it along a little bit. But one of the things I noticed is, you know, as long as you get your, you know, your 10 Zoom meetings in a day, you can work from home and they'll cater a lunch for you on Fridays. And, you know, millennials have kind of helped us push that along where you can work more of a flexible schedule and businesses are starting to understand that that's going to be a better way to retain employees. I've got a very interesting theory about that. That should be um, the work from home telecommuting. That should definitely be in the conversation. It should definitely be on the schedule. But here's where the, I think the real problem is, depending on the type of work. If you're a creative, you need to have person-to-person -person collaboration. I lived this. All right. I started my first business from my bedroom and I was very happy for a long time. And then, so what happened from there was I hired my first employee. This has been many years. I hired my first employee, got office space. I was getting questions asked to me that never were asked to me before, you know, Hey, why are we doing it like this? You know? And I mean, it was always usually a really good reason because it was me who set this up and like, Hey, this is how it's going to be. There was never usually a problem, but it got me to thinking. And then, so like, next thing I know, we got upwards of 20 employees in here, all given their two cents. Our internal productivity changed drastically because I had all this input. A lot of things I pushed back on. No, it's got to be like this for these reasons. But some things I was like, yeah, that doesn't matter. That's better for you. That's easier for you. You know what I mean? And I would have never had that if I didn't have employees. You know what I mean? And if I didn't have that 
internal collaboration? There's certain, certainly special environments, right? Like people have to go in to make cars and, you know, build, you know, build things. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think it, especially, you know, for your business, that definitely makes sense. What I'm talking about is the people that are commuting to go punch in at their sales job. And so, I, you know, for me, it's kind of like, let me just hit my quota. Yeah. And then how I get there doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, I, I, in your business, I guess, how do you measure quota? Yeah, that's tough. It's damn tough. Let me tell you. But I do think that's something. It's not like, you know, hey, what does your benefit package look like when you're interviewing? I think right. I think people are going to start negotiating, you know, hey, can I have somewhat of a flexible schedule? And Well, that's how, I've, that's how I was able to get anybody in the door. And now when these big corporations figure this out, I'm going to be up shit creek because I can't compete with those big salaries that they can offer. What I can compete with is the human factor. You know what I mean? I... Amanda up at the front desk, you know, she's got two little kids. They get sick. School tells them to come pick them up. You know, yes, of course you can go. You know what I mean? Whenever during COVID, um, we locked everything down and I, she came up here with her two kids, you know, just so that she can get ours. And I mean, big corporations don't like do that. You know what I mean? I'll tell you this, you know, uh, being an entrepreneur, a lot of people want to come in and they want to have the $5 million website to get their business started. So it looks good. And sometimes you just got to cook tacos at your house and go out on the street and sell them. And the website and the social media and the YouTube and the hats and the t-shirts and the car wrap and the, all that stuff is certainly wonderful if you want to spend money on it. But uh, I see a lot of people do that and it doesn't always turn out the best. You're exactly right. It's nice to have all these things. There's definitely some credibility that goes there to somebody that maybe don't know you or whatever. You you come up with a wrap car and matching, you know, swag and promotional products and you're handing out pins or whatever. But at the end of the day, whatever it is that you're selling or whatever value it is that you're trying to provide somebody, that's got to speak for itself. That's why you went into business. I mean, that's why you became an entrepreneur. And there's pro tip number two right there. Get your product and get out on the street and sell it. Mm-hmm. You don't need all the fancy tools in place necessarily, except for a website. You certainly want a high end. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I probably shouldn't say that. But in reality, build a basic website, set up a basic social media account, learn how to use them effectively and get out there and sell your product. People have come to me with they're going to take San Antonio and after San Antonio, they're going to take Texas by storm. Uh-huh. And I remember leaving appointments, you know, and, and knowing that this is this person's dreams and you're sitting there wanting to help your business, which is mine, mm-hmm. but you have to have a conscience. But sometimes you have to be honest, like, Hey, you might want to start with a smaller website and let's grow it. The other part is you get to see a lot of really neat ideas. Yeah. A lot of cool entrepreneurs have a lot of really cool ideas. Well, Pro tip number two for being a, a, an entrepreneur. And you brought something up that, you know, I don't have a lot of questions on, but just because you're growing your business and you're laser focused on it doesn't mean the stuff that's happening in your life goes away. You still have to pick the kids up. Yep. You still have to be an adult. You still have bills to pay. Make sure you do that. You really took your email off your phone? It's a real challenge. Like if I'm, if I'm out of state or if I'm out, if I'm doing something, if I'm on a ride or whatever, it's possible and depending on the emergency i might do it you know what i mean but it's a real chore it doesn't i don't get dings i don't get notifications i don't get you know i don't have i don't have outlook or anything on my phone so whenever i was smaller my business was smaller um i picked up the phone and i answered every call and then it got to a point where that damn thing st- never stopped ringing so then i had i had got me a new phone number a private number that i didn't share with anybody just with you know people or whatever that I wouldn't mind them contacting me. You know what I mean? And then all of those numbers went to the front desk. You know what I mean? All the people calling the first number went to the front desk. You know what I mean? And then, you know, we had this big boom and then now this recession and people are back to calling me again and it's fine. But it's very fulfilling when your customer, your client has an issue, a problem, a question, they can get a hold of you and you can solve it or y'all can move forward right away. That's very reassuring for your client. And when you first start out, I think you got to do that, you know, because you're, you're selling a service, whatever it is, you got to be, you got to be available to some degree, I think. But as you've established some kind of customer base or client base, you've got to be able to retract from that. I'm going to do a, a, a lightning round before I forget. I forgot with Crystal and she was upset. She was like, I thought we were going to do lightning round. All right. Pick a color. Uh, blue. Blue. Blue it is. Okay. So I'm going to ask you these five questions and then uh, just answer them however you want to answer them. All right. Ready? Yep. What weird food combinations do you really enjoy? 
I, it may not be weird, but you know what? One of my favorite possible things in the world is I love pizza mm-hmm. with ranch dressing leftover. Oh, that's, that's a staple. Is that is that is that I not so. weird? Well, no, it's not. It's not weird because they they offer that at CC's. You can go. Oh, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're like here. The ranch is here, mm-hmm. and the you know pizza is here. So. Well, I guess the weird combo. You know, I like sardines. Okay, now you're getting saltines weird. and whiskey. Like if I'm drinking whiskey, I'll sit down and eat that as a snack, and it's a Upper Peninsula, Michigan thing we used to do at camp. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> I don't do it a lot down here. <laughs> Probably from all the judgy I mean, bastards. Still like the whiskey, of course. <laughs> uh, I got COVID June of last year. The only symptoms that I had is I lost my taste and smell. You want to talk about eating some weird shit? I was freaking some people out, man. I would take whipped cream and put them on pickles, dill pickles. <laughs> you know, and I would have a, a pin. Here's a here's a good one: pimento cheese and peanut butter sandwich. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually kind of interesting. Actually, the textures. It's you, it's about when you don't can't taste or smell anything. It's about textures, and that worked. There you go. If you could jump into a pool full of something, what would it be? If I could jump into a pool full of something, it would probably be those little, uh, what are those little plastic balls that uh, Mark Rober uses in, on his um, YouTube, the uh, flow bees or whatever. Cube, the, cube, cubids or Yeah, cubies cube, or cube flow bees yeah. or whatever. Yeah, probably those, something like that, yeah. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No, of course not. It's a hot dog. It's a it's good. I guess I guess you could turn it sideways and justify it, but no, a bird bath isn't a swimming pool either. What things do you do every day that you wish could be automated? Ooh, Ooh sounds that, like a million dollar idea. Maybe we shouldn't be talking about this one. Oh man, like I, you know, I just think like t- taking out the trash and doing the the dish wa- the dishwasher you know I, I have a little speaker in my in my um, kitchen and my iPad in there and like tonight I'll be making dinner or whatever and I might turn on like the Cibolo City Council meeting I know I trust <laughs> I'm actually an interesting guy but <laughs> but I'll I'll watch a meeting or something to try to distract me because I just can't the 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 just the minutia, I guess, of doing something over and over and over. Yeah. And it's just put the dish here and put the dish there and put the dish here. And final question. Would you rather be the best player on a horrible team or the worst player on a great team? So do <laughs> I want to be the best player? You know, the nice thing about being the best player on a team that isn't that good is you get a lot of touches. You get the, whatever the sport is or whatever the game is you get, you get you get a lot of accolades game and game time and stuff like that, and you kind of you feel good about yourself, but you kind of feel bad for your team, mm-hmm. and you're part of that. So you kind of, even though you feel good, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like I don't man, it's I've never poached an animal or something, but it's kind of like or you know I shot this big buck. Well, it was in a four by four pin. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like you cheated to get it. You know, so okay. you kind of feel okay. good about it, but you don't really feel right. And mm-hmm. that's going to be what it's going to be like to be a good player on a bad team. I don't know what it's like to be on a great team. Oh, <laughs> I'm no. a Detroit Lions fan, you know. <laughs> I know you had the Packers in here the other day, but you know, I, I mean, I kind of look at it like, yeah, I, I think I, I don't think I'd want to be a bad player on a great team because I'm one of these guys where I got to feel like I'm contributing. Yes, that's yeah. that's a great. That's in my head. I'm sitting over here. Listen, I'm thinking the same thing. All right, the lightning round, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about uh, your competition. Do you feel like you have direct competition locally? There certainly is competition, but the marketplace is so vast, especially with the growth we've had. I think most of the people in my industry, relatively speaking, we get along. Mm -hmm. We help each other out. We come up with ideas. Um, And and my area of expertise is so niched. We kind of more specialize. So a lot of local web web companies refer business to me, Mm -hmm. stuff that they can't handle. I don't think they're really necessarily competition because they're not here locally. 1-800-whatevers. And yeah, I mean, if if people want to use that, they certainly can. But you're not reinvesting back in your community. And I think I would prefer to work with people that want to do that. Especially now with all the damn, I get 40 spam calls a day. I think now in today's environment with all of that type of crap, I think the personal connection means a lot more than it has in recent years. People want to be able to see eye to eye. They want to be able to, you know, deal with somebody. Your sales. Um, 
Do you have, it sounds like you're, you know, you're pretty niche, but so when it comes time to grow, like you were talking about earlier, what resources work best to grow your sales? Is it local networking? Is it online? Is it flyers? Is it email campaigns? What? You know, I've, I've done uh, ads, Facebook ads and Google ads that always yields a couple calls. And for us, you know, a couple calls could be six months worth of work. I nice. mean, it's... Man, I don't want to give away all my secrets. It's really, actually, you know, I make 150 phone calls a day. <laughs> if I was starting a business today, though, and I really wanted to get it going, I would definitely get some get my website up, a basic website, probably spend a little bit of money on Google Ads if yep. I was going to spend money. I've done signs. I hired a sign company, and we did signs for $299 websites, and I went on the other side of Converse. And on 78, I stuck them on every telephone pole and they, people, they were taking them down and people were calling in the city or what San Antonio or whatever that is, a county or whoever. But I got like 10 phone calls yeah. for 20 signs. You get any conversions? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I don't think any of those people are still in business, but yeah. you know, I mean, but I definitely got, I paid for the signs, paid mm -hmm. for my time and, and you know, grew our business a little bit. The effort. I remember one one thing I, I want to make sure your listeners know about is uh, Jason uh, impressed me. You know, I knew he was a big Lebowski fan <laughs> when he showed up at uh, chamber events because I think apparel is an important part of our image. And here he comes in with bowling shirts. And I loved it. I was like, that is so, so classic and they're practical for people that were in the sign business. How'd you come up with that idea? Funny, because me and Crystal, we were just talking about this. It started off, right? I was looking for a, a, a work shirt that uh, satisfied several needs, right? Because uh, we use razors all the time. And so I didn't want to wear a tool bag. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there are certain things that you can't just put in your pockets, you know? A razor, because it's long, a pin, you know what I mean? You'll break it if you sit down, you forget, things like that. So um, those shirts serve that purpose. And then I went and I had our names stitched in the, over this pocket. And then Acme, I had down down the front of it, across the back of it. I mean, it was definitely screamed. I, I Let me ask you real quick, just why I got you for a second. Do you have any competition in your in your real business? Tell me about your competition, because it seems like you're doing these drawings. You got the market cornered. Nobody's coming after you. It's got to be just a gravy train. Here's the traditional way, uh, for anybody listening, my business draws blueprints specifically for self-storage. Um I got into this business because I used to build them with my dad years ago. Didn't take me long to realize I, you know, got tired of being in the heat in the summer and the cold in the winter. Traditionally, um, that service is provided in house. Okay, so um, whenever uh, th there's plenty of freelancers out there, you know, um, and you're going to get mixed results with uh, the, the their their service. But um, as far as companies, and I don't know that I'm going to. I don't know that I should be saying this and I don't even know that I'm going to let this fly. I'm going to edit this out. Okay. But as far as companies go, there aren't any companies that I know of that have multiple employees that do drafting just for self storage. So <laughs> I would say that it's kind of a cornered market, but at the same time, my knowledge is what drives this ship. You know what I'm saying? Well, your knowledge, but, you know, we're also, you know, getting back to, you know, growing your business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want to grow your business. You're working on growing your business, you know, things. It, it, but when we got to that point where things were growing a little bit, did you feel like, you know, what do I do? I mean, you're obviously you're panicked. You know, everybody's worried that they're going to, or do you just, did you notice you just charge a little bit more and then they'll go away? I mean, how do you, how do you handle that as an, how'd you handle that? So, Charging more, I think, is the way you should. That, sh that should be your first thing. Yeah, right. But it's so difficult to do, you know what I mean? Especially with established customers, right? And that is, we had some price increases, but at the rate that we were growing, it was just pissing in the ocean. Nobody cared. So, and then I morally just didn't feel like I could charge any more, right? So we went on a hiring <clears throat> spree. I mean, you know, I, I had... Uh, you know, like I said, we we got up to about 20 people. It was just out of control. I mean, we had grown year over year, like double. I got to a certain point and then I brought in another me to help facilitate things. And that, that ended horribly. And that's a, that's a conversation for a different show. <laughs> but um, along the way though, I, I had made the comment, we are going to be extremely inefficient to get past this so that I can work on bringing us back to efficiency. 
gotcha. and I'm okay with that. And I don't mind throwing money at that, knowing that's a short term thing. And that's yeah. how we handled it. If it's right or wrong, I don't know. Well, the business business just grew itself. Then you didn't have to go. To, you weren't going to the breakfast mixers. And I'm kidding. Obviously, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, your yeah. market because you're a thing. But you didn't really have to go out. I mean, your reputation at some point would yes. have taken care of you. Yes, correct. And that was that's my that was my main business. It's so niche. That's you know, again, this sounds horrible. But whenever I'm working for customer A, and I have like two or three contacts at customer A, one of those contacts quits and goes to work for another company they're like hey i know a drafting yeah. guy you know what i mean and then so like as horrible as it sounds i loved here when people would transition you know what i mean because that, that just spreads my name for me because my work carries itself you know what i mean <clears throat> the overarching question to this whole podcast is are entrepreneurs made or are they born now i think the very obvious question the very obvious answer to that question is both but it's different for everybody some people are you know, born into this, like my nephew and some people are just, they're thrown into a situation where they've got no other choice or somewhere in between. There will always be the employee minded person always is a strong word, but there, that there will always be that mindset. You can't change somebody's mindset. You can, you can, you can surely show them all these things or whatever. But I mean, like the employee mindset is, you know, my brother, my brother is an entrepreneur. He just doesn't know it. You know, he's, he goes about solving problems the same way that I do, the same way that our family does. But um, he works for CPS, City Public Service. He's been there for, I don't know, ever. And, um, you know, he's got a great retirement. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, it's got to be something to be said for being done at 5 o'clock. The older I get, the less money plays a role in my decision making. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Of uh, fulfillment. You know what I mean? Well, uh, you, uh, uh, well, I, I don't, I hate And to, it's not because I make a bunch of it. Don't get, don't get me yeah. wrong. <laughs> well, no, I was going to ask you about that actually, because you and Alan had a lengthy conversation. And the one thing I got out of that podcast that I, that I really thought about is do you become complacent as an entrepreneur? I have. And I have too. And, and I think it's okay. That's the nice thing about being an entrepreneur. I think so. Right. Isn't that like the greatest thing is like, you can say I'm making enough money. We went to Disney this year. I went and did my fly fishing trip. The yep. Our bills are paid. I put a little bit of money into savings. What a great that? year. Mm -hmm. And as an entrepreneur, you get to set those parameters. I had completely stepped down from my company, my, 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 my baby, my bread and butter. I'd completely stepped down in 2018. And so uh, coming into that year, uh, I was in a very just different place mentally. You know, so like I, I had these people in place, customers were happy, employees were happy. I was the only one that wasn't happy. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to remove this from the equation. It only makes sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've built this machine, which I didn't intend on making, but I built this machine. It's, it's running without me, yeah. you know, and uh, could there be improvement? Of course it could be. You know what I mean? But at that time, one of the things that I was hell bent on was I did not want to you know, everybody's afraid to kill their babies or everybody's afraid to, that's an editing term, by the way. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's afraid to, you know, it's, you know, that's my baby. I got to, you know, from cradle to grave, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't want to be that guy that was too scared to let go. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. I, I, I wanted to leave my, my mark, of course, on the world, uh, in this business and, 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 and whatever. But the thing is, is like, I had to take some time off. You know, my brother used to tell me about burnout. I would tell him that ain't going to happen to me. You know what I mean? I had to take some time off and just kind of regroup. I tried to focus my energy into another business and it didn't right. work out like I wanted it to. Uh, after I kind of, you know, cleaned house and we got everything back the way, you know, things started and, and, you know, happy customers and happy everybody. Right. I was kind of really shocked at how resilient of a business I built. You know what I mean? And so that was a great thing about being an entrepreneur for me was because it carried me through a tough spot in my life. And I had no intention of that happening of that. You know what I mean? I don't think anybody does, but I mean, you know, that's, 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 that was, that was something I had no, no idea could happen. You, you, right. you know what I mean? It was um, such a, such a weird win, I guess, you know, um, to be able to, to lean on my business to get me through some, some tough times, you know? 
yeah, that's one thing about life. <laughs> you can, <laughs> you can make all the plans you yeah, want for it. <laughs> yeah, even if you're an entrepreneur, you still have tough times. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they they still come and go. Uh, I had some troubles, you know, getting out of bed and getting myself motivated, motivated. to go yeah. again. And I was like, man, I want to do something else. And that's when I started poking around the job. I was like, I don't know if it was a midlife crisis or what. And, you know, I had a conversation with my brother-in-law and, and, you know, of course my wife, you know, Amy's just the, the rock in my life. And sometimes things happen for a reason and yeah. that, that she happened for a reason. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I look at it like, you know, what am I going to do? And I was just like, maybe it's time just to flip it over. And it's not, it's just, you know, do I want to grow? Do I want to keep doing this? You know, we had a couple big sales back to back. And so it was like months when I wasn't really working too hard, you yeah. know, doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I like to work. I like to hunt. I'm a sales guy. I want to be out there talking and, and moving stuff. And, and, uh, felt like we weren't moving stuff as at the pace I wanted to a little bit. And so, you know, I went, I went through some of those frustrating times, I, you know, in, in this business, I went through a divorce a few years ago. Mm. Um, went through, uh, you know, my daughter was born, you know, when I had my business, you know, it's been, it's been quite a, quite a ride and, yeah, and, uh, hell of a journey. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, now it's, do I grow it or do I, you know, start do something like you're doing, you know, you still have your, your original business going and, mm-hmm. you know, that's paying the bills and you're happy with it, but you're also doing, and I'm kind of like, uh, this is kind of the direction I'm thinking about going to. Like, I should start something completely different. Way out of my wheelhouse uh, right now. <laughs> I have I have a couple of ideas, you know, uh, based on the on on you know your not you know not the local podcast, but you know on mm-hmm. local you know news or media that yeah. kind of, that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, there's some gaps in the market that I see right now, and it's kind of like, man, do I really want to do it? And then you know, but I, here I am, an entrepreneur with a company that's been successful for what fourteen years, yeah, yeah. and I you know, and, I, and here I am successful, and everything's going along well. And I'm still scared to try something new. You know what I mean? It's like, what if it doesn't work? You know, and and I am an entrepreneur. What the heck's up with that? Well, you know, you're going to get some of those. I I mean, you know, the, 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 the best, the best response I can give you to what if it doesn't work is what if it does. Well, and you, And, (laughs) and if you can answer that question, honestly, you know, I, 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 I challenge you. Any, I'm, I'm dead serious. Anybody out there, right? If you are on high center on whether you should go out on your own or not, and you're like, "What if it doesn't work for these reasons?" Okay, well, it, it's going to be easy to it's going to be easy for you to list those reasons why it's not going to work. God's honest truth. Yeah. But if you can honestly answer yourself on what if it does work, and if what if it works for these reasons, put those down on paper and look at them side by side. My son is an entrepreneur in his spirit. Mm-hmm. And he calls me. He's like, hey, dad, I need you to print off this label. And I said, okay, well, what, what's going on? He goes, well, you remember that old uh, little um, uh, Game Boy thingy or whatever? It's his little computer thing at PlayStation. It's the little one. Anyway, he says, I, I sold it. And I said, oh, well, great. You know, what do you need me to print off this label? Well, I'm going to ship it. And I said, well, who did you sell it to? How'd you get the money and what's going on? He's like, I got on YouTube. I learned how to set up an account on eBay. I, eBay still in business. He said, I didn't know that, but anyway, he set up an account on eBay and got it all set up. So he sold it for 200 bucks. And so I printed off the label. I said, I'll help you ship it. I'm not going to charge you anything this time. I got a bunch of stuff for you to sell and I'll pay you commission. <laughs> like, there's all this stuff. I'm like, yeah. you know, I got my old baseball cards. I've been hanging on to forever. Really? Like, let's just yeah, get, let's get, get, them get out of all, all this stuff. I got a garage full of stuff. <laughs> And so we're going to help each other. You just didn't know it. (laughs) Well, and so I'm like, oh man, this is kid's going to be great. He's an entrepreneur and he, you know, wow. You know, and, and I took him to, uh, to, uh, you know, he's going to go to veterans and I took him to school the other day and, you know, they have like, you go to the gym and there's all these little booths with like, do you want to go into business school or whatever? And you could tell athletics, of course they, you know, he plays sports. So they, you know, he was over there talking to all the coaches and, and he went over to business and he's like, dad, I want to sign up. For, I want to be in business. And I said, well, don't do it because of me. you got to have your own journey and your own adventure. You know, exactly you don't want right. your kid just to follow you. Exactly right. And he said, no, I want to come up with ideas and I want to make those ideas reality. And I said, well, kind of like your little eBay business. He goes, yeah, dad, about that. And I said, what's that? <laughs> what's that? He goes, well. Apparently, I'm not old enough, so the money is sitting in limbo. This guy has his thing. Apparently, oh. I got to get it, but you're going to have to do a bunch of work. <laughs> and I said, 
<laughs> you know, I said, Dylan, your that's cut just got a little yeah, short. I said, smaller. I said, uh, I said, Dylan, uh, that's called regulation. <laughs> and, uh, when you're in business, you have to learn about that. So, you know, I'm thinking about this entrepreneur thing and here I am having this wonderful conversation with him about all this. He broke the rules to sell something. You, know, you don't want him to go into that kind of business. You know, you gotta be but... business owners push that line a lot. Uh, you certainly don't want your kids to get in trouble doing business, but I love his spirit. And I'm like, so this isn't going to slow down us selling stuff. He goes, no, no, I got to figure it out. We're going to set up an account under your name and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <laughs> kid's 14, you know, and I'm like, all right, well, oh, that's he's awesome. like, well, the gar- the neighborhood garage sales coming out. I've seen some high traffic items that sell well on eBay because I've been watching YouTube videos. I want to hit the garage sale. So I'm going to use the 200 bucks I got. How do you assess for your company? How do you assess value? That, that's really tricky. So first of all, because nobody wants to leave money. On you the have to check out the marketplace. You got to call your competition. You got to know what pe- other people are charging. It kind of like, you know, you, you know, you don't obviously want to call across the street and fix the price. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is get online, look at what other people are charging, talk to your customers, find out what other kind of bids they got, especially if they're a medium sized company, that's going to give you a good a good way. It's interesting. You know, we used to charge $150 a year for hosting mm-hmm. and I'm thinking, and I'm talking to people and they're charging $150 a month for hosting. And so it's like, okay, well we've, you know, we, there's somewhere in between, in between that. Yeah. And so, you know, some of our long-term customers are wonderful and they've been with us. I feel an obligation, a duty to keep them happy. Mm-hmm. So for them, I might bump them up to 300 a year. Okay. But others, it might be like, all right, we have to go to 500. Our, you know, it costs me more to put fuel in my car, mm-hmm. vegetables, yeah, you know. Yeah, you have to do that. And so I sent out a bunch of invoices in January for our hosting renewals this year. And, I, and, and they went up and I sent a nice little note with an explanation as to why mm-hmm. not one person balked. They sent me the checks. Yeah. Um, and I also look at time. I know, you, you know, you guys talk and we've talked a little bit about the hourly rate. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I kind of have a ballpark of what we need to get in order to get by. And well, the, yeah, because at the end of the day, the, something's going to take you X amount of time to get it done. Right. So, I mean, yeah. it's like, yes, you know, the hourly rate is a, is a fascinating conversation to have, but I mean, it's still a, um, a metric, you know what I mean? For putting together a price. Well, and, and how do you charge an hourly rate when it took you 20 years to learn how to develop this skill to the level it's at today? Exactly. But if, if you're in a business like me and you're like, okay, well, I Peter, you know, Peter and I, we have our residual income and some of our ongoing maintenance contracts and some of that. But I, you know, I try to have those conversations. I also learned though, you know, you go to the grocery store for milk and a lot can go wrong. A lot mm-hmm. can change, you know, uh, you know, we have deadlines and stuff we have to hit. So uh, I, I prefer to bid it by project, but I come up with that number based on a rough estimate of hourly product sure. knowledge, anywhere between 100 and 150 an hour. I'm trying to get in the habit of asking everybody. I'm new to this, by the way. This is my fifth show, and uh, actually, the one with Stosh is uh, is jacked up, so we're gonna have to do it again. So, no, no, no I, you're number five. Oh, uh, so uh, well, maybe. But anyways, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Go ahead. <laughs> real, 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 real quick, the the. But how do you, how do you determine the value? Is it um you know like you 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 said yes you know you got to you got to know what the market's charging you know what I mean but also what about um. I don't know. So like there's, if there was, and this isn't the case, but if there was no competition, how would you assess value to your product? Well, and that obviously if there's no competition, that would be a game changer, but you know, uh, value is interesting. Um, I don't know if I could really actually answer that. I guess if we could talk return on investment, one of the things being in my industry is, we'd love to have you on as a business partner. Can you build this website? Can you be our web development backend and we'll give you some ownership? I get almost every project I get offered that or the majority of them in the private stuff when we're developing something uh, because they want that consistency and backend. They want to have a web developer on staff. And obviously if you're part of the business, you own part of the business, uh, we try to shy away from that because, you know, you run your business, let us run ours. It's just easier for us. Uh, we've looked at some opportunities in the past, mm-hmm. but they haven't really, we, we've tried it. And it's just, you know, they're it, to get into a business relationship with somebody where you're going to partner with them in some mm-hmm. sort of way. It takes time. You can't just say, well, I got an idea and you own a web company. Let's get together because that never works out. Well, yeah, especially because you're doing, you know, you're putting all the cost up front and out of your pocket. You know, right. what I mean? you know so to, to, to hopefully develop something long term 
with somebody you have no idea if they're business savvy or not. Right. Or well, if the product's even going to work. Well, it's kind of like, well, I want to buy a $10,000 website from you, right? And so you're like, okay, I'll, well, I'll let you do it, but it's going to cost you 12000 What? Well, I'm an investor, 20%. That's our rate, you know, and it's, and uh, yeah, so so for us, that's kind of kind of the way we work. I always like to look at, you know, and this is probably the wrong way to go about it, but I like to look at what I need at the end of the month to get by, what sure. I'd like at the end of the month and what would be great at the end of the month. And I always try to aim for what what would be great and exceed that. Yeah. Uh, it's a realistic goal. So, uh, yeah, value would be tied to that formula. I hear you like to fish. <laughs> Actually, I see that you like to fish. Yeah. I see. So I know when you're out of town. I know when you're fishing. Yeah. Because I see pictures of these beautiful fish. Yeah. There is something that I cannot describe about fishing. You get a fish that just starts nibbling, just starts talking to you. You know what I mean? There is something about that feeling whenever it's just like you're enjoying a beautiful day or maybe it's hot as hell, whatever, you know, and you know, it, water looks like glass and then your line just starts dancing a little bit. Yeah. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. You know, there is something magical about that. Not to sound corny. But there really is. Uh, I, I, I've enjoyed all the fishing experiences that I've had way more than the hunting, you know? So I used to I used to hunt a lot too. And, you know, growing up in northern Michigan, you know, I used to throw, you know, at the time it was against the law, but I'd put my bow in the trunk of my car sure. and go to college. It was <laughs> illegal because technically it's a firearm on campus. But anyway, I, you know, I'd take my bow and I, you know, and I'd go hunting after, after class in college and I grew up in a remote area in Northern Michigan and that's what I did. And, you know, and, and I've, you know, killed deer with my bow and my gun and I've killed, hunted down here and I've done it too. And I, I love to hunt. Hunting for me takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the, one of the <clears throat> things is, you know, for me, I like to set up my season, you know, so if I'm going to put bait out you know corn or whatever you know i like to have the blind ready i like to go in when i when i have rubber boots so there's no scent and i wear like to wear a scent lock well, all that preparation takes a lot of time yeah. so when you're raising kids starting a business sitting on city council doing these other things it's really hard to find the time necessary to dedicate to hunting and then you know if you're on a leash you got other people and stuff but fishing on the other hand i agree with you um you know, I, I, I love, um, you know, to me, I think fishing is, is it for me? Like, what do you do? You know, and I, well, I play guitar. Well, you know, what else? I mean, well, I like to go up in the hill country with my wife and, you know, and she likes, you know, we go to, I like going to Colorado and when I'm there, I like fly fishing, you know, Amy's like, Oh, well, tomorrow morning we're going to get up and we got to go. And she's like, you're going fishing for a couple hours, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, Damn I'm right. up here in the mountains. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I take my fly rod and, and there's times my brother-in-law and, and my, my brother joins us now too, which is great. But uh, he'll, he'll, we'll get up at four in the morning and, you know, four thirty, five o'clock, be on the road, driving an hour into the mountains, fishing for two or three and turning around so he can be back to work by noon sometimes. Wow. But when you're catching 20 inch trout on your fly rod and you're the first ones there and you have this big, beautiful meadow to yourself. Uh, Why would you want to give that up? Oh my gosh. How and, can you give? <laughs> well, and being an entrepreneur that, you know, it's another thing, you know, you're working on all these projects and you got your pictures on social media and you know, you're like, your clients are going to be like, man, that dude's screwing around. You know what? They, you know, not get my work done, but, uh, yeah, I, I, th I agree with you. There's nothing I, for me in this world for me, mm -hmm. like fishing. Yeah. 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 So. It's yeah. So, um, how do you, you mentioned something real quick before, before you want the last thing here about social media, has that caused you any grief? I, I think so a little, I think, yeah, I think so a little bit, you know, I know you've been right. You were riding your bike a lot. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was following I you and stuff and thanks for taking me on that adventure. I'm not going to hold, thanks for saying it. if you get, I really mean that if you, if you ever, um, you know, some people get jealous and stuff. If people get their work done, I don't care what they're doing. But sometimes I, ha I think I have people, you know, oh, yeah, you're always fishing and stuff. I, I also meet people that tell me things like I just told you, like, thank yeah. you for taking me. I was at work one day and I saw your little video of that nice brown trout you caught. And uh -huh. thank you for getting, letting me get lost with you for a couple minutes, you know, nice. and that kind of stuff. And um, But at the end of the day, if I only live to 62, I'm 48, if I only live till 62, I want to be able to say I did it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to stop. Parting words of wisdom. Well, uh, oh my goodness. Well, keep doing it. Man. <laughs> uh, you know, no, Jason, we I think, you know, if, uh, 
it's really nice to catch up with you. Yeah. I feel like you're you're one of those guys like that I never get to finish a conversation with. I've been following your journey on social media and I and you know that I'm always there. I'm phone call away and and you know it sounds yeah. like things have been going really good for you. You seem like you're in a really good place, man. It's been just awesome and I this is the best thing I'm doing all week. Yeah. And I'm working on a congressional campaign right now, helping Ed Cabrera run for District 28, and it's exciting. A lot of phone calls and a lot of work. I'll be at polling locations and that, but this is by far the most exciting thing I'm doing all week. So I'm well, thanks, I'm, I'm glad you're getting it. this going. So hopefully uh, at least my wife listens to it. I gave her like 10 <laughs> shout, shout outs. So. Yeah, yeah. You'll, just, you'll, you'll have to tell her that, you know, hey, I, I shouted you out at least 20 times. You'll have to listen to find out when and where. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, yeah. man, I appreciate you coming yeah. down. 